بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم لا حول ولا قوة الا بالله العلی العظیم الحمد لله رب العالمین صلى الله على سيدنا و نبینا ابل قاسم المصطفى محمد و آله طیبین الطاهرین لا سیما بقیت الله في الارضین اجل الله تعالى فرجه الشریف اللهم اخرجنی من ظلمات الوهم و اکرمنی بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين. خب الحمد لله بهاف توفيق تو كنتينيو على استدي اف آداب الصلاة. As you remember, our main topic was presence of heart during salat and indeed all acts of worship. But our main topic is salat. The late Imam Khomeini said that we need to make sure that external obstacles, those things that are in our physical environment and may distract us, are controlled. For example, if there is too much noise or, you know, if, I don't know, the place is you know, very hot or very cold or, you know, uh, too much, you know, light is there, you know, whatever physically is stopping our focus, we should try to manage it. Or if you are too hungry, you are too thirsty, for example. But we said these are not the only things that would distract us. There are also some internal things and in particular, uh, he mentioned two points. One is our um, power of imagination or faculty of imagination or quvvaya khayal and the other one was hubbut dunya. Now in chapter 11 he uh, speaks about the solution, the treatment for uh, stopping our imagination wandering around and in chapter 12 he talks about how to get rid of hubbut dunya and then there is a, a kind of appendix or a kind of a supplement discussion and then this section of the book will uh, finish Chof. let us go to the discussion about khaya this discussion is very, very important. As you remember, we said that even if someone doesn't suffer from the second problem, which is hubbut dunya, if someone is zahid, if someone has ascetic life or is detached from dunya, still this doesn't mean that he would not have the first problem, that the imagination goes around and doesn't let you know you focus this is very important discussion and many uh, scholars say that if you manage to gain control of your um, faculty of imagination and fantasy then you have made great progress you have made lots of progress in your uh, spiritual journey uh, because this is causing so much of you know distraction and uh, stress and tension and you know going you know back and forth etc Imam Khomeini uh, starts with something general about all our faculties and all the power that we have, whether it is internal or external, whether it is physical or spiritual. He says that all are possible to be educated, to be trained, 
Allah has created human beings in the way that if they train themselves they can gain much much more power and much much more effectiveness and much much more activity with even your eyes with your ears with your muscles which are physical you can do much more and you can be much more in control of them if you train yourself how much you need to eat how much you need to drink how much you need to sleep there is an average but this doesn't need to be the average if we all human beings have you know proper uh, activities and you know training and education you know we can do much more with much less consumption for example he says our eyes are not able to steer at a strong light yeah for example we cannot look at sun directly it is very painful and maybe sometime you know if it, you look at it, it would cause problem etc but he says some of the people that of course we don't encourage he says some of those who do riyazat batile you know they have some special uh, spiritual disciplines which may not be correct but even if it is not correct it uh, strengthens the soul uh, something that uh, I found very amazing and I have mentioned in some lectures is mentioned by the late Ayatollah Ansari Hamadani who was a spiritual teacher of uh, Ayatollah Dasqeib, Ayatollah Nejabat and others he says in Islamic spirituality, we are not after taqviyatun nafs or strengthening the soul. We are after tazkiyatun nafs, purifying soul. These are two different things. In some forms of spirituality, especially in kind of Eastern spiritualities, in some of them, the focus is on strengthening the soul or spirit so that you have you know some kinds of abilities that ordinary people may not have uh, and for sure if you don't pay too much attention to your body and physical needs and keep it to minimum and you know resist against your temptations desires then gradually your spirit your soul becomes stronger and gradually they can you know help you understand secret things or you know move you know things even from distance etc sometimes maybe a person with what a date with a date can remain alive you know for many many days uh, so imam khomeini says some of these people Ashab Riyazat Batile, who are after this kind of wrong spiritual disciplines, they gain some power. We are not encouraging this method, we are not even encouraging the result, just to say that this is possible. Human beings are very, you know, um, strange in the sense that so much capacity is there. He says, they can reach the point that they look at sun without suffering, without closing their eyes, without turning away. And for hours they look at the sun. It's possible. It's all through training. It's all through method 
which can be taught to other people as well. This is not godly power. This is not sign of being close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is sign of knowing how to release some spiritual power and gain more control over your body. Just recently, you know, a few days ago, I read uh, memories written by one of uh, famous Iranian scholars who was also in politics and died a few years ago. Uh, in his memory of uh, more than 20 years ago, he said, you know, he met uh, a Sufi order from Kurdistan of Iran. And he said that um, they have this uh, practice that he was saying through dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, th through invocations of Allah, they gain control over their body. And he mentioned to this alim who died that there was a person who in front of visitors so it's not that was you know not uh, visited by outsiders he ate some blades that you know men use for shaving their face he ate some blades and then he himself opened his uh, stomach brought them out and put a towel on his uh, stomach and it was healed. Such things are possible. I'm not saying everyone who claims is uh, you know, uh, telling the truth, but there are even movies, there are people who have seen this. It's possible that some people put a sword in their stomach and they don't die. They bring it out. Why? Because human soul and spirit has ability to manage body and if you have a strong spirit then you don't let your body die because of bleeding you stop bleeding with your willpower with your control we are not encouraging these things but just to say that this is possible okay or for example Imam Khomeini says Going back to the book, he says some of these ashab al riyazat al batil he keeps uh, you know, using this uh, to say that this is batil, this is you know, false. He says they uh, stop breathing for a long time. If we don't breathe for a minute or two minutes, you know, three minutes, you know, some, some of us even cannot stand, you know, three minutes of not breathing. But some people, he says, you know, they don't breathe for. Uh, you know, good time. So, there is such a thing in human body and human soul that you can train yourself. If you want to have control over your thoughts and your imagination quickly, no, this is not working. Some people said to have control over khiyal is impossible. Imam Khomeini says, no, it's not impossible. But if you want to do it quickly, yes, it's almost impossible. But if you are determined and keep trying and train yourself, it's possible. You can gain control over your thoughts. Maybe, for example, at beginning you get control over your thoughts during Salat for 10% Oshr, like one tenth of Salat. Then little by little become, you know, maybe 15%, 20%, you know, sometime maybe 80%, it can increase. But it needs training. You should not lose your hope. Yes, despair is very destructive. You know, when you want to uh, speak, as a child, or you want to walk, you want to run, how many times you try? 
You try it, keep trying till you are successful. As a child, the good thing is that we don't, you know, become despaired and we don't, you know, think too much about, you know, people laughing or, you know, uh, I don't know what they think about me, etc. So we keep making mistakes and we improve. But as an adult, it's difficult, you know, when some people, some are very good when they learn another language, they keep talking. They, they know that they may make mistake, but after sometimes in controlled environments, they speak. In front of teacher in the classroom, for example, you know, they speak and then they improve. Some people know, even in the classroom, they feel shy to speak and we say, you know, we may make mistake, you know. It's a language class, but they feel shy. We should not feel shy. We should not feel despaired and keep trying when something is positive. Okay, in the case of Salat, we should not be despaired. We should have hope and we can gain control. But what is the method? How we can train ourselves? Here, our scholars have uh, important discussions and contributions, even in the field of Islamic philosophy. And inshallah, I have planned to share with you in the next session uh, what uh, Muslim philosophers and ethicists have said about Qubbaya Khiyal and you know how to control it. What people like Ibn Sina, Shaykh Ishraq, Allah Tabatabai have said. So let, uh, next week, Allah, I want to expand on this topic because I think it's very important. But Imam Khomeini briefly has said many things here. So today, inshallah, we complete discussion from the book. Next week, inshallah, we will expand. And I don't want to enter into discussion about Hubbud Dunya because first, I don't want to rush. Second, because I want to have a follow-up for this discussion next week. So we finish this chapter, but the next chapter about Hubbud Dunya, we leave it for, uh, inshallah, future. He says, and I have highlighted this part, Tariq umde ram nemudan an amal nemudan be khilafast. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, because sometimes uh, my computer stops, uh, so okay, alhamdulillah. My picture is, seems is working, is there. Okay. He says, the main method for controlling and, you know, like taming, ram, ram nemudan, like, you know, domesticating, taming, this wild bird of khayal is amal nemudan be khilaf, to act opposite to what your khayal wants to do. He explains, و آن چنان است که انسان در وقت نماز خود را مهیا کند که حفظ خیال در نماز کند. When you want to say your prayer, work. A little bit on preparation. So prepare yourself for protecting your khayal against going around. And prison your khayal in salat. As a bird, you know, who wants to go around. Uh, Someone, you know, said uh, something interesting from Ayatollah al-Udma Bahjat, Rahmatullah alayh. Uh, he was saying that, uh, first of all, we should say our Salat on prayer mat. Prayer mat is not just uh, something in order to, for example, make sure that uh, the place is you know, clean and, you know, tahir, etc. It's not just for that. Or it is not just out of respect 
for salat because salat you know is very important so i have a special thing that only at the time of salat i use or at the time of i want to recite quran it's not just that although this is important but it's not just that prayer mat which is dedicated to prayer is for you like a safe place is a safe place it's like your small sanctity and this scholar was saying that one of you know my friends actually I know him and he was you know saying for, uh, you know the view of Ayatollah Bahjat he was uh, maybe you know quoting him um, directly but it's also in other books when you want to say your salat and you're sitting on the prayer mat imagine that you are putting around your prayer mat although prayer mat is physical but it has impact on your soul imagine you are putting around your prayer mat a fence As soon as your khayal wants to go out, this fence should stop it. Of course, maybe this by itself is a kind of distraction, but this distraction is less harmful and it helps us to gain control. That I think there is something around me like a fence and I should not go out of this. I just remain here. You may lose this attention or control, but the main thing is that keep coming back. As soon as you remember, come back. Maybe something comes to your mind without your control, no problem. As soon as you realize, don't pay attention. This is the key of what Imam Khomeini says, what Ayatollah Bahjad says. Maybe they have different analogies, different things, but the key is this. Of course, we talk about you know, what philosophers say you know, in the next session, inshallah. So, he says, Insan dar vaqt namaz khud ra muhayya konad ke hifz khayal dar namaz konad. So, prepare yourself that you want to keep your uh, faculty of imagination inside salat prison it to this action that you are doing now which is salat and as soon as it wants to run away bring it back و در هر یک از حرکات و سکنات و از کار و اعمال نماز ملتفت حال آن باشد in every motion in every zik everything you are doing whether it is ruku, sujud, qiyam whatever قراعه تکبیر try to think about what you are doing investigate what you are doing and don't become heedless don't let it become something like an autopilot he says this looks difficult in the beginning but after some time you find it easier and easier and you will get used to it don't expect in the beginning you will have full control but little by little as I said, he says, you know, maybe at the beginning you have 10% of your salat with this condition. Maybe even less, but it's possible and it becomes more and more. And you should never become despair. Then, okay, this was the main uh, solution, but this solution needs energy. Needs desire needs determination where do you get this energy or desire or determination 
to so much watch yourself and your khayal during Salat. He says, it comes when we feel our great need for this. Umde dar in bab hiss ihtiyaj ast ke dar an ke an dar ma kam tar ast. He said the main thing is that we should sense our need for salat with presence of heart. Unfortunately, he says this is not that much in us. Our heart maybe has not accepted that our main capital for felicity in the hereafter is Salat. Maybe we think Salat is a taklif, an obligation. Is it na'udhu billah, na'udhu billah. He says sarbar, you know, like a burden. You know, we may think, you know, let, let me do it so that I don't need to worry about it. For example, you know, sometimes we say Salat awal al waqt just because we want to have peace of mind. Sometimes, no, we love and priority. So, we need to understand. You know, if from this course, inshallah, your salat improves and, you know, you have presence of heart uh, and teach other people, that's great. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. But if none of this happens, at least if you realize how Salat is important and how much our happiness depends on Salat. Still, I feel very happy that at least we have made this achievement. Inshallah, we will achieve more. But I'm saying this is at least the foundation to know that Salat is really the key for our felicity and happiness. We shouldn't underestimate Salat. If something is so important, if something your eternal life relies on it, then you keep working for preparation, for training yourself, gaining that skill, that trait of character, finally. He says, ما نماز را سربار زندگانی خود می شماریم و تحمیل و تکلیف می دانیم He says we He includes himself although He was not like that but you know He says you know, We think it's a kind of burden It's a kind of تکلیف you know, An obligation which is difficult But if you know that how great is Salat, you develop love for Salat and you will not be tired. Look at, you know, dunya. Every day we go to, for example, work. Most of us, yeah, we have nine to five. Some people have in the evenings, up in the night. Some people, uh, like people who have shops, you know, etc. Sometimes they work, you know, early morning till late night, even in weekends they work. And because they are not, you know, employed by any company, uh, so it's up to them to have, you know, leave or not leave. And many times they don't have leave. Maybe th th throughout the year, I had, you know, um, people that, you know, they were, you know, self, you know, employed. They had shops. Maybe every year, you know, maybe five days, six days, you know, he was traveling. Always they were at the shop. Yes, uh, you know, Friday was, you know, closed. But the rest of the week, open. Morning till night. Maybe sometime having rest during the day, sometime not. So, but they don't feel b this is burden. Why? Because they want to be active, they want to make money to look after family, etc. For different reasons. Some people want to just, you know, save money. Some people want to spend on family. Some people want to do charity work. But anyway, we don't get tired for working, tired because of working for dunya. Because we have love for dunya. We know how much this is productive. Even, you know, many students who study in a school and universities because later they want to get employed and get salary, you know, they don't feel tired, etc. But when it comes to Akhirah, when it comes to Salat, we feel tired, you know, we don't have you know, that much desire, we feel, you know, someone has to push us. Why? 
because we have not understood greatness of Salat and effectiveness of Salat and therefore there is no that desire that sense of need for Salat which if it is there it brings your attention towards Salat then he says you should not inshallah we will talk about uh, hubbu dunya later but he says you should not think islam invites us to have hubbu dunya and hubbu akhirah yes in islam we don't neglect dunya in another sense it means this temporary world this physical world we should not neglect as Muslims, we should plan, we should run our dunya in the best way that other people do. If we are making farms, if we are making factories, if we are making cities, if we are, you know, doing whatever we do, we should not neglect the dunya. But we should not have independent regard for the dunya. We want this to be at the service of our spirituality and our perfection and he said no one should think that Islam encourages us, us to have hubbu dunya in this sense and hubbu akhirah together no you should have uh, concern for dunya but not hubbu dunya in the sense of you know excessive love for dunya or taking dunya as independent thing how can you have two independent uh, you know things or ultimate ends Islam says Go after dunya in a regulated way, in an ethical, spiritual, halal, tayyib way. Not that you develop hubbu dunya. You should not be attached to dunya at all. I uh, remembered when I was reading this part, a hadith from Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam. I hope I can find it now. Uh, this is in Amali of Shaykh al-Saduq and uh, Allama Majlis in Bihar al-Anwar has mentioned this hadith it's a beautiful hadith uh, of Tabus al-Yamani and he says that he went to Hijr Ismail next to Kaaba and then he saw someone is doing Ruku and Sujood and then he checked and realized it was Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam. He says, I told my, uh, myself, this is Rajulun Salihun min Ahle Baytan Nubuwa. You have great opportunity, in my words, you know. He said, You know, you have great opportunity. This is a righteous person from the family of the Prophet. And now you must listen to what he is saying to Allah, what du'as. He's making. So he says, Wallahi la agtanimanna du'a'ahu. I'm going to benefit by Allah from his du'a. And he says, you know, I was uh, watching him till he finishes salat and see what du'as he's going to make afterwards. He says, فَجَعَلْتُ أَرْقُبُهُ حَتَّى فَرَغَ مِنْ صَلَاتِهِ وَرَفَعَ بَاطِنَ كَفَّيْهِ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ Imam finishes Salat and then raised his palms towards heaven. Then Imam Sajjad salam started going, uh, started sorry, saying, Sayyidi, Sayyidi, Hadhi Yadawya. My master, my master, these are my two hands. قَدْ مَدَدْتُهُمَا إِلَيْكَ بِالذُّنُوبِ مَمْلُوءَةِ وَعِيْنَايَ بِالرَّجَاءِ مَمْدُودَةِ My master, I have extended, I have stretched my hands toward you while they are filled with sins. And I have extended my eyes to you while they are with hope. وَحَقٌ لِمَنْ دَعَوْكَ بِالنَّدَمِ تَذَلُّلًا أَنْ تُجِيبَهُ بِالْكَرَمِ تَفَضُّلًا And it is expected that if someone calls you with regret and humility, you would reply with karam. 
with honoring tafadzul and out of your favor. So anyway, it's very beautiful. And then later, Tawus Yamani says that Fabaina nahnu kathalik. The dua continues, but I, uh, you know, go further. He says, when we were in that condition, then some of the companions of Imam Zainul Abidin came. Is aqbala nafarun min ashabe. Some of his followers came. Faltafata ilayhin. Imam Zainul Abidin. Uh, turned towards them and said, Ma'ashira ashabi. Usikum bil akhirah. Walastu usikum bil dunya. My companions, my Shia, my followers, I enjoin you about akhirah. To look after Akhirah. I don't enjoin you about dunya. Why? He says, فَإِنَّكُمْ بِهَا مُسْتَوْسَوْنَ وَعَلَيْهَا حَرِيسُونَ وَبِهَا مُسْتَمْسِكُونَ Because I don't need to advise you to look after your dunya and you know, don't, don't die, for example, out of hunger or thirst, you know, you know, do this or that, you know, make house for yourself. You can... Why? Because you are already very concerned and even haris. You are greedy. <laughs> and you are, you know, holding on to it. Mustam sekun. Of course, Imam said this to those people, but maybe we can generalize that in general, not everyone, but in general, we are all, you know, automatically looking after our dunya. Yes, if someone neglects dunya, we should tell him, you know, no, don't neglect dunya in Islam. Uh, we have been said that كل دنياك كأنك تعيش أبدا وكل آخرتك كأنك تموت غدا. Look after your dunya as if you are going to be here forever. Which one interpretation is that means plan everything for dunya in the best way. Do things in the way that maybe you are going to be here forever. This is for someone who is neglecting dunya. We say okay. Look after your dunya, look after your body, your health, your house, your business, I don't know, etc. Communities, cities, economy, etc. Look after it when someone is neglecting. But in general, we don't need to tell people about these things because these things automatically draw attention of people. They receive lots of you know, invitations from uh, Ahlul Dunya about these things. What we need more emphasis is... So Imam Zainul Abidin said, ya ma, uh, he said, Ma'ashira ashabi, usikum bil akhira, wa lastu usikum bil dunya. Fa innakum biha, means bil dunya, mustawsawna, wa alayha harisuna, wa biha mustamsikun. And then he said, Ma'ashira ashabi, inna dunya daru mamarrin, wal akhiratu daru maqarrin. Dunya is the abode for passing, murur. Akhira is for qarar, for remaining. فَخُذُوا مِنْ مَمَرَّكُمْ لِمَقَرَّكُمْ From where you are going through, take for where you are going to remain. Uh, and Imam continued. So when I was reading um, this part of the book, I remembered this beautiful hadith, which exactly says what Imam Khomeini you know, wanted to establish, that... Uh, Islam doesn't say to have hubbul dunya and hubbul akhira. Uh, Islam says to have hubbul akhira, but we can say attention to dunya, not neglecting about dunya, but not that hubbul dunya in the sense of excessive love or independent love for, for dunya. In any case, he says, Ma chun ihsas ihtiyaj bi dunya nemudim wa anra sarmaye hayat wa sarcheshme lazat dar yaftim. در توجه به آن حاضر و در تحصیل آن میکوز because we have found dunya is something that we need it's a, you know, something we need for our life we get lots of pleasure if we have dunya if you have money if you have I don't know job you know house car you know you can get lots of lazat and pleasures so 
dunya has become very important for us and you know we keep thinking about dunya even if you don't want to think about dunya dunya comes to your mind but why you know when we want to think about allah allah doesn't come to our mind when we want to you know be focused in salat spirituality or salat doesn't come to our mind dunya comes to our mind because we have made mistake in taking dunya as our aim and developing lots of love for that instead of taking akhirah and salat as the key for happiness he says this coldness that we have towards salat is because our iman is weak otherwise with so much emphasis that we have in our hadith in the quran in sayings of scholars you know philosophers you know ethicists etc we should have done much better with our salat and shaitan unfortunately has gained control over ears of not just physical head but also heart so that we don't benefit from what we hear you know maybe we read hadith about presence of heart maybe we listen to ulama maybe we read this book but it doesn't reach the heart sometimes if it reaches your heart alhamdulillah if you feel your heart is welcoming alhamdulillah otherwise it's possible that you hear all these things and you don't feel anything towards it why because shaitan has blocked the ear of the heart quran says those who can benefit from uh, reminders and from signs of Allah that they have heart or they listen while they are present so sometimes our ears are blocked by shaitan shaitan doesn't let something reach reaches our heart so he says one of the great tasks of wayfarers towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to focus and attach and tie their attention to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is musabbibul asbab he is the cause that makes other causes cause he is the one that put you know influence and effect in other things we should be attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the ultimate cause and ask him for help for everything in addition to what we do we need to ask Allah for help so that he would help us in this uh, transformation so that we can benefit from Salat and then we can benefit uh, for everything you know uh, afterwards from this relation that we make during salat so first uh, we need pray, uh, help of allah for benefiting from salat and then salat helps us with other things this chapter finishes here inshallah bi'iznillah as i said next week uh, next session we will talk about this control over khayal according to what some Muslim philosophers and scholars have said and then inshallah chapter 12 we will go back to the issue of hubbut dunya which is one of the reasons for having divided thoughts and attention alhamdulillah rabbil alameen Uh, is there any question? Alhamdulillah, I recorded. Inshallah, I will share with you the recording. Um, Thank you. Brilliant discussion, Aqa. Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless you, Inshallah. Remember us your dua, please. Inshallah. Fi Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.